Welcome to another Transforming Leadership Talk. Today I'm speaking with Pastor Russell Evans. He and his wife Sam are the founders and the global senior pastors for Planet Shakers Church, a large and a rapidly growing church with campuses across Melbourne and in a number of nations around the world. Russell is well known as a leader with a strong orientation to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, welcome, Russell. Thanks, Steve. Great to be with you. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's really wonderful to have the opportunity to hear your thoughts on leading and moving in the power of the Spirit. Um, I count you as a friend and I value highly uh, your insights. So um, great to be with you today. Yeah. Thank you. Great to be with you. And uh, it's like two mates sitting down on a bench talking about the things of God. It'd be awesome. Yeah, that, well, that's brilliant. And that's a great way to think about it. <laughs> I wonder if we could um, just open it up by you giving us a brief overview of your experience of the Holy Spirit in your life and in your ministry. I was raised in the Pentecostal church. Um, my grandfather was a big proponent of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I remember at the age of six, I got baptized of the Holy Spirit, um, spoke in tongues. And... Uh, and then through to my teenage years, um, I remember about 14 years of age, I, I began to question God and, and I felt God speak to me saying, well, that language that you got when you were six and that encounter that you had, did you make that up? And I had to say no, because I did it. And so it actually was good at um, grounding me in my faith for, for my Christian walk. And then when I was about 17, um, I was going through a, a stage where I was trying to find who I was and what I wanted to be and uh, felt a call of God. But at the same time, my dad's a famous pastor, so felt the pressure and the insecurity attached to that. And I went to this youth camp and I just had an encounter with God. And I remember I really struggled with the lies of the enemy that would say that you can't speak well, you'll never be able to do something great for God. When I was 15, somebody prophesied over me that I'd be a spokesman to nations, but I had two bad experiences uh, after that, that I actually withdrew and I said, I'm not speaking publicly again. And so I'm on a camp and I'm at an older call and, and I, I'm talking to God and we're just, Jesus, I love you. And he, he's saying he loves me. And, it was a really amazing moment. And I, uh, he said, I want to use you greatly. And I said, but I can't speak. And I felt him speak to me saying, who told you that? Did I ever say that? And I said, no. And he said, I'll give you power. I'll come upon you and give you power. I said, see, I believe that when you're saved, Jesus comes and lives in with you. The spirit of God lives within you. That's for you. But I do believe that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That's for others. Acts 1.8, you receive power. That word power, ability, efficiency, and might. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be a witness in Ju uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outermost parts of the earth. So that encounter with God comes upon you, equips you. Uh, I call it, I, I believe you have defining encounters in your life. But you have daily encounters. You have daily devotions. But there are moments in your life that God comes upon you and marks you for your destiny and your purpose. And it was at that stage where God said to me, I'll give you power. So really our whole, our whole ministry of Planet Shakers is out of your encounters with God, go change the world. And so that's why we need the Holy Spirit because he's the one who gives us ability to do that. Yeah, yeah well, that's a um, wonderful insight. I remember uh, your grandfather very well. Russell, I remember him once in the chapel of this college um, exhorting us all um, yes. uh, to seek the Holy Spirit, that we needed the Holy Spirit. That was all we needed. Yes. <laughs> and, um, yeah, you know, I, I just believe him. And uh, I think uh, your life and your dad's life um, is a testament to um, exactly uh, what your grandfather was expressing. Yeah. How do you think the Holy Spirit has um, shaped your leadership? The Holy Spirit said to be your comforter, your guide, your paraclete, the one who comes alongside. So he's he's the director. He's the one who leads you. Um, when Jesus was on this earth, he was the representation of heaven. So everything he did, he represented the Father. And then he says, I'm going to go away 
and I'm going to give you somebody who will uh, lead you into truth and he'll give you, uh, he'll be a paraclete, he'll, the one who comes alongside of you and wait for him. That's what they did in Acts chapter two. And so Jesus positionally is seated at the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is the one on earth that is uh, um, operating on behalf of the Father and the Son. So I need the Holy Spirit to empower me, to direct me. So in leadership, I just, I just think it's learning to hear the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit and then obeying it. I, I think it's, I think we complicate leadership sometimes. Um, and I think you can learn from people. I do think you learn from people because there you can get an impartation from them. Hebrews 8.5 says, build according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. The mountain represents the presence of God. And in the presence of God, God designs or scars or stamps you. That word pattern is like an architectural blueprint. So when I get in God's presence, the Holy Spirit comes and designs or puts a blueprint in me for my destiny. So my job isn't to copy someone else's blueprint. I can learn from them and have an impartation from them. But my job is to obey the directing of the Holy Spirit for my life. Principles are the same all over scripture, but the outworking of your own destiny is really following the Holy Spirit. So my leadership development really, Planet Shakers started out of an account I had with God and he said, start a conference called Planet Shakers. I said, God, what's that? You know, I didn't know what it was. And he said, just start it, empower young people. So we started, I found with the Holy Spirit, he doesn't give you the 10 point plan. He gives you the one step plan. And he, he says, do this step. And so we did it and God moved upon it. And then eventually he said, you know, do music, record music. So we did that. And then eventually he told me to plant a church. I never wanted to plant a church, but because I followed his direction, now in Melbourne, 17,000 people, over 90,000 people have walked the aisles of our church to say yes to Jesus. That's not because of my genius. That's not because of my gifting. Or my, it's because I've just said yes to his direction. And when I say yes to his direction, I learn, I, I find the Holy Spirit, he doesn't take you here to say, you know, start a church with 20,000 people. No, he will say, just start a church. And if you get 50 people, that's the first step. So he takes you on a journey that you learn to get confident to hear his voice. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much for that. You know, listening to you, um, it sounds essentially like your entire leadership experience, your ministry experience is shaped by the Spirit. I wonder if you could give us a little bit of insight into how do, how do you experience that influence or hear that voice or sense the moving or direction of the spirit yeah i remember a guy spoke came to me one day and he, he said i've worked you out and i'm like why don't you worked out he said i know you, your uh, key and i said well, what's my key he said he licked his finger and he put it in the air and i said what's that he says you read the wind and I said, what do you mean you read the wind? He said, you, you, you're sensitive to hearing where the spirit is moving. Yeah. And, I, and I think that's what I've learned to be is when I, sometimes I'll have a thought come that's just not even in my parameter at the moment or um, it will like do that. And I'm like, well, I wasn't planning to do that, but I've learned to go, okay, I can't overanalyze this. I've got to respond to it. Um, just little simple things. At times, it, I just find with the Holy Spirit, he, he responds to obedience. And so, you know, I, I'll go to, um, I'll be in a meeting and I'll say, okay, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? I just believe our dependence should be completely on him. I do think you have structures and all that, um, I, I get that, but the structures aren't king, they're just a servant. So when God begins to speak about different things, like I want to heal somebody over here, but God, that's not in the in the order of service. Um, 
it, it's his service. It's not my service. It's his service. He's the one who ministers to the people. The gifts of the spirit are actually for the people to be ministered to. So I've got to learn to hear his voice and then just obey, just on the simplest th of things. And if I do the simplest of things and the small things, I'll get confident to do the medium things and then I'll get confident to do the big things. And I think it's like in a relationship, you get to know the person and then you get the confidence to respond to him. I haven't always got it right, um, but I'd rather have a go than not. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, and um, since he gave you an insight into your personal um, relationship with the Spirit. Now, in, in your ministry and in the church there, it's obviously it's grown very large, very complex. Um, you've got a team around and about you whom I, I assume you depend upon significantly. Um, any thoughts on experiencing the Spirit's leading and empowerment across that team in a team environment? Yeah, I, I think... What, what the Holy Spirit's really good at doing is he reveals the truth, the word of God. You know, the, the Pharisees knew the scripture, but they didn't know the Jesus of the scripture when he turned up. In other words, you can know the, the script, but not know the Savior. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who breathes upon his word and it becomes life to you. So... What we try to do constantly, you can teach skill. Skill's easy to teach. Anyone can learn a skill. But it's the heart of the man. We listen through our heart, right? So everything I hear is through my heart. When, if, I, if I'm feeling rejected, I hear through rejection. If I'm feeling, you know, good, I, I feel through that. So I think as a leader, you've got to learn to hear the voice of the spirit for the hearts of the people you lead. And so our leadership nights or our discipleships are basically dealing with heart issues. Because if we can get people's hearts soft and get people get all the what does it what does a seed do? A seed becomes a tree and it grow, it grows and then it releases more seed. So if I've allowed a seed of bitterness in my heart, I then have a stronghold that comes a tree and then I release seeds of bitterness on other people. On the other side, if I have a seed of faith and it becomes a tree of faith, I release faith to other people. So it's really important that I hear God about my heart and the heart of people we lead. So then letting the spirit of God speak to them about, come on, let that in, in, get rid of your heart. My wife, with our children, when she would raise them, uh, and we'd raise them, but she would speak to them. She'd go, have you got naughties in your heart? And uh, mm -hmm. and I remember my son one day, I was talking to a youth leader in my house from another a nation, and uh, he had this really struggle with the senior pastor he was leading, and he had all the things that were wrong. And my, I didn't know that my son was in his bedroom. It was about 20, at, oh, no, 18 at this stage, and he walks out, he knows the youth leader well, and he says, to the youth leader, do you have naughties in your heart? Do you need to let the naughties out of your heart? And the youth leader says, he started crying. He says, yeah, I've got to let those things out. And that yeah. moment was a moment of release because he let the Holy Spirit deal with his heart. Yeah, great. So the spirit really is the key to the unity of your leadership team and, and really the, um, the effectiveness um, uh, of those working together. I wonder, well, turning back to you, oh, sorry, Russell, what were you going to say? Um, you think about this. In a moment where you really encounter God yeah. and you have this moment with God, you're not in disunity. Yeah. You're not in, in fear or doubt. Yeah. You're in we can change the world. Yeah. Why? Because it's the spirit of God that you're experiencing. So we got to help people live in those moments a lot more. Yeah, yeah great. Yeah, that, that's wonderful, Russell. I wonder, just coming back to you, you're well known uh, for your preaching. Um, 
can you help us understand how you preach in the power of the spirit? Hmm. Yes, yes. Um, how I do it is I feel God speak to me. I'll be asking him, okay, what do you want to say? Because um, I do believe a preacher is an oracle of God. It, it is uh, a voice that God can use. You know, faith comes by hearing. So I generally um, think of the end before the beginning. In fact, God operates like that because uh, he, 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 uh, he dreams, then he creates, right? So what I do is I dream with, in the spirit what I want believing God to do in that service or yeah. in that moment. And then I create the bed of the sermon behind that. Yeah. But the whole time, the whole time I'm trying to hear, I'm not just trying to get through my points. Uh, I'm trying to hear, okay, are you, is there a moment you want to go a certain way or you um, like, he might emphasize a point. I can, like, I'll feel this great faith come if I, I go on a point and I'm like, okay. And my nature will want to finish, get to the next point, but the Holy Spirit is saying, no, I want you to emphasize that because I'm doing something right now. And so I've learned that I'm not the driver of this vehicle. I've created uh, with, his, with, a, with, a, with his help and also diligence getting the word. I've got the content and I've got all that, but I've got to make sure, you know, we do four services on Sunday, for example. I preach the same sermon four times, but every mm -hmm. time it's different. Because every meeting, God has an emphasis for someone or some person. Because if you think about it, our sermons aren't just for the masses, they're for the individual. And so it's listening to the Holy Spirit and him taking uh, a moment in a meeting or a moment in a sermon and he, and he takes over. Or it might be, right now, stop. I just want, to, want you to pray for somebody with healing. I'm not talking about something about healing. Or rejection or something like that and i'll stop and set and i don't even have to finish my sermon uh, but you know i try to finish it but i'm not in a place where i'm so locked into everything i've created to get through mm. that yeah. makes sense yeah it makes makes a lot of sense russell um your church is really well known for, for many things but i, th I think Many people would call it a, a contemporary Pentecostal church. I think they would use the, the, those two descriptors, contemporary and, and Pentecostal. Um, from your perspective, what, what are the essential features or the really important features of a contemporary Pentecostal church? Yeah, good, great question. Um, Jesus did two, or well, he did a lot of things, but or well, he did three things really uh, he spoke the language of the day he was contemporary in other words when he spoke to fishermen he spoke about fish when he spoke to tax collectors he spoke about money so he when he spoke to the woman of, at the well he spoke to her about her, her five husbands or um so yeah. he he spoke their language that's been contemporary yeah. um but he also had power and you can't get power, the power of the Holy Spirit, through the efforts of men. It comes through prayer. The church was birthed out of a prayer meeting. So I always tell pastors, what are you birthing out of your prayer life? Yeah. And that's why I say the problem with conferences, and I do conferences, is don't come to our conference and copy us. Because God's got a unique plan for you. Come to our conference and get an impartation and apply it to for yourself. So, um, because what we've done in the, in the body of Christ is we've created a karaoke church. We've copied yeah. someone else's revelation instead yeah. of having our own revelation and let it be an impartation to us. And God's got a unique design for each church. Um, so, encounter prayer is, is very important. Um, discipleship is very important. Jesus said, go on all the world and make disciples. Baptizing, the word baptize is the word baptizo, which means to be continually immersed. So if I get 
this mask, for example, and it was initially white and I put it into black dye, it might come out gray the first time, but the more I immerse it, the more it becomes, takes on the nature that it's immersed into. You can't do that. You can't build that type of disciple in one week, three months, six months. It's a constant discipling them in, and they're not discipling them into the name of planet shakers, you're discipling them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm big on taking time with people. Jesus took three years with 12. He's the best leader we've ever had. He's the, the Son of God, and he took three years with 12. What we tend to do in the Western church is we rush people. And, yeah. and when you rush people, you don't deal with their heart. So I think essential to every church is a strong prayer base, is a strong discipleship um, base and encounters with the Holy Spirit. Um, they, if we're not encountering God, so here's the thing, people forget my sermons, they'll forget our songs, but they won't forget when God touched them. Yeah. So yeah, right. that what changes people. My sermons add to them, then the Holy Spirit takes the words, but it's that encounter. I can tell you when God spoke to me about ministry, when God spoke to me about Planet Shakers Conference, when God spoke to me about planning a church. It, they were defining encounters. Yeah. That's what we've got to create in our churches. God never created the church for the consumer. He created the church for the disciples. Yes, Jesus spoke the language. But I always say to people this, my skinny jeans and my hat and my coolness, kept, I could go into a, a hospital room when my mum was dying of cancer and my contemporaneous can do nothing to her situation. I need power. That power comes by the Holy Spirit. And, and here's the thing is you got churches that, oh, we just need the love of God. Yes, we do need the love of God. And you've got churches that are focused on the power of God. Yes, we need the power of God. Power without love can become abuse. Love without power can become weak. We need the love of God and the power of God married together in the church to release the works of God. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, that's a fabulous answer, Russell. I wonder, um, there'll be people watching this who are looking at you and admiring um, admiring you and, and thanking God for what he's done through you. Um, someone who wants to lead in the spirit or lead in the power of the spirit, um, what advice would you give them? My advice would be get on your knees, get in the presence of God and just pursue God. Um, but not pursue him in a way where, you know, sometimes, uh, there's sometimes I pray for people and they're so desiring a breakthrough, they become the blockage to their breakthrough. So, God, please move and, and you go pray for them. And they're, and they're just so wanting to get touched by God that they actually... Their, their enthusiasm stops them from receiving. So my thing would be pursue God in his presence and let him minister to you. Listen to him. Let him come upon you. Uh, let him fill you. You know, we all leak, as we've heard people say um, over the years. So let God fill you again. Um, and, and also... Um, Understand that God's ability in you. Uh, I think the biggest challenge in our day and age um, for anyone who's successful, or for anyone who wants to be successful, is pride. Because what happens is we get we get self dependent instead of instead of God dependent. And I'm I'm trying to work walk this season that says, God, I need you in everything. I can't, I can't do it in, in who I am. I, it, I can only take people so far. You are the one. So would you come and give me your ability? Would you come and fill me with your presence? Would you come and direct my paths? And, and I just, yeah, you know, when we had, we were in lockdown 
uh, Melbourne's the most locked down city in the world. Mm. And there was each lockdown, I had to get, I needed a key from the Holy Spirit. Um, so one was, I felt the Holy Spirit says, there's going to be 40 days that we were going to have lockdown around that. So why don't you ask God to, if you've got a habit that you need broken, let's over these next 40 days break the habit. And people yes. got free. And then the next one, I felt the Holy Spirit say, get people to pray in, in the Spirit um, for six minutes a day or 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. and start their day doing that because it builds yourself up. And so that's what we did. And people came through that season really well. And actually their prayer life um, was so much stronger. So it's getting the keys from him. He is, the Bible says he gives you the keys of the kingdom. What you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I just gathered the keys of the kingdom come through there's principles in the scripture, like the sword of the spirit. It, it, there's a whole heap of things. Praise is the key. Um, giving is a key. There's a whole heap of biblical principles that are keys. But you need the right key for the right door to open up the thing. So I'll say, God, I need the key for that. What's the key? And he'll say, do this, and I'll do that. So learning to just listen to that voice and it's better having a go and learning than not. And I've learned what not to do, and I've learned what to do in hearing his voice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thanks very much, Russell. Thank you very much. I, I reckon you've given us some uh, great insight and some great wisdom. In fact, I think some of the, the thoughts you brought us here today are quite remarkable. So <laughs> I'm very grateful, and I'm sure the uh, listeners, the watchers are very grateful for what you shared with us. Thanks, Russell. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure. Well, thank you all for listening to this Transforming Leadership talk. You can find more talks at uh, transformingleadership.com. God bless you richly in your leadership. I look forward to talking to you again soon. Goodbye.